In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Zechariah, and I know that we actually had our last Chaplain's Report on something in the book of Zechariah, but it just happens to be that I was reading through it and I found something else fascinating. Now, I'm familiar with this passage, I'm familiar with this prophecy, but I caught something new when I was reading through it this time, and it just struck me in a different way that I had not thought about before. So let's go to the book of Zechariah, chapter 11. Verses two through thir uh, 12 through 13. I said to them, If it is good in your sight, give me wages. But if not, never mind. So that they weighed out thirty shekels of silver as my wages. Then the Lord said to me, Throw it to the potter, that magnificent price, at which I was valued by them. So I took the thirty shekels of silver and threw them to the potter in the house of the Lord. Now, for any of you that know your New Testament, a lot of this language ought to sound very familiar. The reason is because despite the fact that Zechariah happens in the days of King Darius, which would have been at minimum 400 to 500 years before the time of Christ, because it would have been after the Babylonian captivity, they would have been taken over by the Medes and Persians, and so we would have been living in that era of biblical history. So hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus was born, you have the prophecy of his betrayal. Because look back at what it was talking about. They weighed out 30 shekels of silver. So in other words, 30 pieces of silver. And then throw it to the potter. And then you have the last little part there. I threw them to the potter in the house of the Lord. If you'll remember... When Judas betrays Jesus, he does so for the price of 30 shekels of silver. When he realizes what he has done, when he feels the guilt of having betrayed his friend, Lord, and Master, he goes back to the temple, the house of the Lord, and throws the money back at them because they said, this is blood money, we can't take it. And so they refuse to take it from him. So he responds with, the Gospels say, throwing it at them, at their feet specifically. And then he ran off, and, and we know how that story ends. He wound up hanging himself. And what did they do with that money? They took it to a potter's field, and they purchased it with the price that had been given to Judas as his wage for betraying Jesus Christ. It is amazing to me how it got all those little details right. And a lot of people that are skeptics of the scripture have pointed out on multiple occasions that a lot of the prophecies that were fulfilled by Jesus were fulfilled intentionally. This is not an unfair criticism. In fact, we have several points in the gospel where Jesus specifically tells us he is doing things to fulfill a prophecy. So yes, Jesus was familiar with the prophecies. He knew what they were. He knew what they said. He knew what he would have to do to fulfill them. And that's neither a good thing or a bad thing. It just is. But there's a lot in the gospel that Jesus had no control over. For example, he couldn't control the fact that that he was born in Bethlehem. No human being can control where they're born. He couldn't have controlled the fact that Herod tried to kill him and that his parents fled because of that. And then they went to Egypt and then fled out of Egypt. He couldn't control the fact that he had been referred to as being born in Bethlehem, yet he was a Nazarene. That's something else that doesn't seem to make sense when you look at the prophecy, but when you see how it played out in the Gospels, it all meshes together perfectly. And here's another great example. 
yeah, Jesus could control a lot of aspects of his life, and he could have specifically made it to where a lot of those prophecies come true. Couldn't have done that in this situation. He couldn't have controlled how much Judas was paid. He couldn't have controlled what the elders chose to do with the blood money once they got it back. And he couldn't have controlled Judas and made Judas handle it the way that he did, going back to the temple and throwing the shekels of silver at him. Those are all things way outside the control of the human known as Jesus of Nazareth. It is something within the control of Jesus, part of the Godhead. Only a supernatural force could have foreseen that, taken those details, and transcribed them to Zechariah hundreds of years before his birth. That's what's so amazing. When you read through the gospel, especially when you're looking at the prophecies of Christ, there is no doubt no human being could have produced this book. It's just not possible. With over 40 different authors, 66 books, over thousands of years, and it all comes together perfectly, I've written two books, and I can't even make every detail mesh with them. <laughs> And I'm the same person. And I know where I'm going ahead of time. When you look at passages like this and look at their outcome in the Gospels, you can only reach one logical conclusion. This was written by the hand of God. Stay the course, friends. Normally, this is the part of the video where you would expect me to ask you to like the video and subscribe to the channel, but the truth is, I don't really care whether you do or not. In fact, you know what? Don't subscribe. It's not like there's a lot of really important stuff going on in the world in the state of Alabama that you should probably be aware of. So, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. Or don't. I don't really care. Reverse psychology. Boom.